and they're sabotaging and, and they, they're relentless and the media displays it all that's what really gets to me the US media displays every bit of it they, yeah they display it as if it's one idea against another well, there's no right or wrong here just one uh, political idea against another yeah just like just like obese people want to be accepted as like an alternative lifestyle they don't want to be looked upon as unhealthy uh, lazy fat slobs <laughs> They want to be looked on as an alternative lifestyle and accepted for being obese. It's the same thing. There's no rights and wrongs anymore. Uh -huh. They're turning the whole world, the whole society into shades of gray instead of blacks and whites. So there's no wrong. It's like no fault auto insurance or, or no fault uh, divorces. You know, everything is no fault today. Well, somebody has to be at fault. So what does that mean? Like Goldman Sachs is no fault? They were not at fault. That's correct. Everything's like no fault. Like, like you know, nobody, there's no consequences for exactly. people's actions anymore. Exactly. It could exactly. be, it could be a murderer get, getting out on parole. It could be... You got murderers that spend more or less time in jail than somebody who, who kites a check. You know, three strikes and you're out. Yeah, He's yeah. He's in there for life. Hey, the, these punk criminal teenagers should should serve hard time just like an adult, but they don't. It's like people get off scot free in America today, and nobody is held held accountable for their actions anymore. Well, that's what it amounts to. There's no discipline for children. You know, you have to you have to treat them as an equal and negotiate with them. Meanwhile. You have to be their friend. No, you can't be their friend. Instead and, of a mommy or the daddy. You can't be their parent and their and their friend at the same time, and you and they're not equal until they're eighteen. You know, so yeah. So this is the world we're living in. This is the society yeah, you know, we're living also, in. Also, once upon a time, when you were eighteen, you were an adult. You were allowed to drink. Now, I was. concerning Miley Cyrus, as I said before, she's only twenty. She's not an adult yet at 21. Now it's a 21. It's an adult. They get their liquor. Well, you can still get porn at 18. Yeah, and you can still go to war and die at 18. And, yeah. And you can vote at 18, but you can't drink until 21. Just think about how, how preposterous that is. You could drive at 17. 16. You, at 16. You could, yeah. you could work... I guess at 16. Well, right? Newt Gingrich would like you to work at five. Yeah, if you if you get food stamps, the he, hell want, with he wants little kids to go to work for the for the little shit food stamp money that the government <laughs> gives them. Yeah. So you know it's it's all screwed up. You know there are there are many laws on the books that are outdated that should be revised that should be eliminated. There 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 are, laws are not always logically and intellectually they're never if they're done by Alec and the corporations and the rich yeah true true what the hell logic do those laws have <sighs> none whatsoever yeah right now Las, Las Vegas is putting mentally ill people in charge of the sums <laughs> what you know what do you call bums etc derelicts vagabonds they're giving yeah. them a couple of bucks lunch, put them on a bus, and sending them to Los Angeles. You mean they're like, they're they're shipping them out, they're exiling them. Well, remember with South so, Carolina, so, right? So that's how, that's the... the uh, the homeless to move uptown, baby. So that's the that's the the right wing solution of dealing with the homeless and the poor, is to ship them out. Yeah, make it someone else's problem. Pass the buck. Yeah. They, like, they don't want to really solve the problem. Hell no, they don't even offer it. I want to defund Obamacare. I don't want to improve it. I don't want to make changes that are good or bad or ugly or whatever. No, no, no. I just want to refund it. Defund it. Come on. So they want to... They, want to, they uh, have no solution. They want to roll back to the days when uh, if you're poor and you didn't have money, you just starve. You just die. Now... Yeah, like with Social Security. Before Social Security, uh, uh, hundreds of uh, elderly people starved to death. Okay. Frozen in the wintertime. Based on that thought that you just uttered and what I said, 
I'm looking at all the right wingers out there right now, whether you be a stupid inbred Bible Belt, red state, you know, uh, lower middle class fool, or whatever you happen to be, living in a cabin, and uh, or whether you be wealthy, a fat cat, doesn't matter. What is the incentive? Where is the incentive for living in America and looking at America as being so great, better than anyone else, mm -hmm. if if you don't have money, you perish? Where, what is so great about the United States of America if the poor end up perishing according to Republicans, if the poor have to just die? Then, then that means America and the American dream is only for the rich. Yeah. So And they like it that way. So all this flag-waving, Yankee-doodle-dandy propaganda is all basically for the wealthy. It's all front. Just like the Republicans use religion, Christianity, it's a front. And for God the, is their front man. And Fourth of July comes, and they have the whole, all the dramatics over in New York before the fire, before, during, and after the fireworks, and all the speeches. And and meanwhile, if if the Republicans had complete control, lock, stock, and barrel. That celebration with all this patriotism, that's only for the for people with money. Yeah. And money is speech, baby. You know, so So the more money you have, yeah. the more speech you so get. So it's the American dream lie pretty much. Well it's always been, but it's been covered over. And they got these idiots down south believing it. Look, we got people who support and pity the billionaires in this country. Okay? They've done a very damn good job of propagandizing these poor slobs. Pity the billionaires. The FBI has been using drones to support its law enforcement operations since 2006 and has spent more than three million dollars on the unmanned aircraft. The disclosure came in a new report by the Justice Department's Inspector General Michael Horowitz, who revealed that the department also has awarded 1.26 million dollars to at least seven police departments and non-profit organizations for drones. I wonder what non-profit organizations would need drones. Hmm. The Inspector General said another Justice Department component, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, plan to use drones to support future operations. To date, the ATF has spent $600,000. From 2004 to May 2013, the Justice Department spent almost $5 million on the unmanned aircraft. In June, then FBI Director Robert Mueller told Congress the agency occasionally used the unmanned vehicles <coughs> but was developing guidelines in anticipation of issues that will arise as they become more omnipresent. In one instance this year, the FBI used drones at night during a six-day hostage standoff in Alabama. In a letter to Ju uh, in July to Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Isn't it funny that the biggest scumbags uh, in, the, in, um, in Washington seem to be from uh, Kentucky? Uh, well, the two. It's two right of now, them. Right now, yeah. Two of them. <laughs> uh, the FBI revealed that it had used drones ten times since 2006 for surveillance in kidnappings, search, 
and rescue missions and drug and fugitive investigations. Among, among them was last winter's standoff between the authorities and Jimmy Lee Dykes who was shot to death after holding a five-year-old boy hostage in an underground bunker in Alabama. Remember that? I remember that. Nope. You don't remember that? No. He stopped the school bus, he took the kid and he went into the, the uh, storm cellar I was there for several, uh, you know, whatever, and they, they put the, the, the authorities put down things through the pipe, through the air vent. And uh, kind of like I that. remember the guy in uh, this man, I think he was in the New York area, who, who had, uh, who had um, uh, young females uh, held hostage in his basement for years. That was in years. Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, that was Cleveland, Ohio? Mr. Ariel, he's dead. He hung himself. The one that had the girls hostage as, as like sex slaves, correct? In the basement, oh. he hung himself with his sheets in his cell. Oh, sheets. Well, he kept those girls for ten years, prisoners, but he couldn't stay for even a month or two. It was ten. It was three. Three for years. ten years. Oh, three girls were in in in. in uh, in his basement for 10 years? They were uh, not only and, and they couldn't, they couldn't, none of them could escape in 10 years. He used to, you know, tie them up or whatever. He also had a child by the one. I would imagine. Michelle. Yeah. Oh my God. And, and, and he thought they were a family. And they couldn't. These, Polyandry, baby. And they, Polyandry couldn't, and they couldn't escape in 10 years. I, I, I think it's. I, th I find that very hard to believe, but anyway. Well, they did, uh, they did, uh, when he somehow screwed up the door or something, and the one got loose and came to the door, and some people came to help her get out, and yeah, then she took, got out. It, and took, they, it took 10 years? 10 years. You sure it was 10? 10 years. Don't buy it. But anyway, go continue. It soon will cost you 49 cents for a step. Yeah, well, it's bound, it was bound to happen. Well, it doesn't have to happen if the Congress would stop taking that $6 billion every year well, that's for what, pensions that don't well, exist. Well, that's what I mean. They're, 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 they, they, want the, uh, they want the post office, uh, like, so, go broke. like Social Security, to be non-existent. They want to hand it over to UPS, DHL. They want to privatize and it. And the Federal Express. They want to privatize it. That's correct. Well, I know, like, companies like UPS are a total ripoff if you want to send a heavy package. I, 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 they let the post office do that. I priced, uh, like, you know, what it would cost to send 20 pounds of anything. It's expensive. It's ex ex very expensive. Uh, postage today is expensive. No, I mean parcel shipping. Uh, yeah. Parcel no shipping where of, you, of no things, where you, go. you know, things that are substantial. And then it's more expensive if you want a two-day delivery or, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know all about that. Express delivery, overnight deliveries. Yeah. Um, yeah. Versus Plus, standard UPS. an arm and leg and a spleen. Ver versus standard UPS ground yeah. and, you know. The Postal Board of Governors said on Wednesday that it wants to raise the price of a first-class stamp by three cents, citing the agency's precarious financial condition and the uncertain prospects for postal overhaul legislation in Congress. See? The Republican Congress ain't working on that. But they <coughs> sure are working. What, it was 42 times now they voted to defund Obamacare? Yeah, the repeal cans. They don't work two or three days a month. They repeal two why or three days they, a month. Why ain't they? Why you know if they want to repeal a law that is already on the book? How come they ain't going after Glass Steagall, getting it back, <laughs> so that the if Wall Street can't do to us what they did? 
in 2007, 2008. Why is that not on their agenda? Because those are their buddies. Ah, so we see, yeah. Cronies. Yes. The Wall Street boys, the banksters, the, the Goldman Sachs, uh, Sucky Sachs. They're, they're, all, they're all in bed together uh -huh. with the Republicans. Uh -huh. They're buddy boys. Of the options currently available to the Postal Service to align costs and revenues, increasing postage prices is a last resort that <coughs> reflects extreme financial challenges. The rate proposal must be approved by the Independent Postal Regulatory Commission. If the Commission accepts it, the increase would become effective on January 26th. As part of the rate increase request, the cost for each additional ounce of first class mail would increase a penny to 21 cents, while the price of mailing a postcard would rise by one cent to 30 Four cents. I remember when a postcard cost three cents. I remember when, uh, when I was a little kid, my, uh, uh, a, a nice big chocolate malted was like thirty-five cents. The cost to mail a letter to an international destination would jump five cents to a dollar fifteen. Postal Service also said it would request price increases totaling 5.9% for bulk mail, periodicals, and package service fees. I wonder if they're thinking of charging businesses the regular price to mail a piece of mail instead of its bulk rate crap. Here, here. Ooh. That's right. Ooh. That's right. Ooh. I could dig it. I could dig what you're cut where you're coming from, Daddy O. Cool. Sorry, Bonesy. Mr. LaParka. Social Security made a one point three billion dollar in potentially improper disability payments to people who had jobs when they were supposed to be unable to work. The Government Accountability Office estimated that 36,000 workers got improper payments from December 2010 to January 2013. Now I ask you just a simple question. Going to Social Security to get disability benefits is a real harassment. Nowadays. Correct? Nowadays. But then when you got it, how come they don't know these things that are going on? If they indeed are. Because I'm a little skeptical. Because, like, for instance, everybody knows that some time ago, the Social Security Administration had an internal policy mm. to deny benefits to anyone the first time around. Absolutely. Well, the lawyers of, of Binder and Binder uh, have were agreed that. with that. Yeah. They're oh, aware. yeah, that, which is kind of dishonest of the government for doing so. Well, let's go back to the Boston Commission. You know, they play in the numbers let's game. Let's go back to the CPI. Yeah. They've changed all of that to make it so the payments are less. So it's all dishonest. Well, when they when they deny people the first time around, they're 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 relying on the numbers game to yeah. many They know people. that one third of people will not persist. They will not pursue it. That is they correct. They will just drop out. That so considering the fact that there's all kinds of tricks that the government pulls not only to deny you but they try to sucker you into getting a part-time job by sending you a letter about like 
some ticket to work. The ticket to work and self-sufficiency program, which govern, which Republicans love to use that that term, self-sufficiency. Up you know, by the bootstrap. Yeah. Baby. Meanwhile, there's no jobs out there, so they trick you into thinking you can get a part-time job, and they tell you it. You do not have to fear losing your benefits, and it's a lie because once you have the part-time job, uh, 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 down the road, you have to go in for another evaluation, and they go, oh. You've had this part-time job for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Oh, you're not disabled anymore. We're taking you off everything. Yeah. It's a, it, it, you, you're as, suckered in. Or as Supreme Court Justice Roberts would put it, if you can brush your teeth, you're not disabled. Yeah. Now, Ken Create uh, aggressively disagrees with me, but I said, Ken, and I told uh, Bobby, I said, don't fall for this. I know for a fact that this is what they do. So... If you're going to apply for Social Security disability or supplemental security income, do it. Do it with a Social Security law firm. Do it with a Binder and Binder or somebody like that. You know, do it. Go. It's like with immigration. Oh. They harass you through no end. Through to no end through the immigration process today. So you are forced to get an immigration lawyer. Mm. Now some of them are crooks. Some, ah! some of them are honest. Yeah. Do your research, check reviews, get an honest lawyer. But you have to go in with the lawyer. And uh, unfortunately, with immigration, they want to get paid right, right up front. There's no uh, contingency, right? Is that what they call it? contingency? But with with the uh, social security law lawyers, they generally get paid. Uh, when you when you get paid when you get paid when you win the case you're retroactive. It's usually like 25 percent goes to it the law firm. Used to be a firm. turd. Used to be 23 and a toy. Well, it's 20. It's 25. Uh, 25. With, with some. Good. With some. Sounds good. So <clears throat> what happens is you um, 25 of your retro goes to them, which is fine because the lawyer can probably get you more money than if you did it on your own. Well, not more money. What do you they mean, not more money? Time. There's no more money. You, you get what you get. Well, that doesn't sound very good. There's no uh, scale that, you know, it, it depends on your disability. In other what words, you get. it's in the books. Yeah. If you're a full, if you're, if you, if you're, if you uh, are awarded full-time disability, depending on the situation, you get this amount per month. Not really. Well, how do they determine? I don't know today. Well, I imagine. The, I do know that. You now, know. what's the point in getting the lawyer if you're not going to get getting maximum? It, getting through the first try. That's the point of getting no, the lawyer. No, the point is, if I if I apply for such a thing, I want Scalotta, man. I want the. I want you got you you need money nowadays to live on in this day and age. No kidding, but they, I don't want chump change. But there's got to be a difference between someone who is. Uh, totally uh, 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 dis disabled, and somebody who lost a finger. You know. Well, gee. Well, yeah. 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 Let me finish up. Yeah, here finish because up because I want. I want to cut out. Run into I want to. Uh, everybody interrupts me. Jesus Christ! Damn it, man! Son of a bitch! No, uh, what I'm trying to say is, let's take the break before 3 p.m. No because kidding. of Speedy Godzilla over there no, that he I calls. Just said that. Well, I don't even. Did you did you synchronize that 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 lovely clock with this with the cable TV clock? Is it is it correct? I have no idea. Probably wrong. I have no idea. All right, hurry up because the numbers represent less than one percent of beneficiaries and less than one percent of disability payments made during that time frame. But the GAO said the overpayments. Uh, uh, reveal weaknesses in Social Security's procedures for policing the system. The report lays out clear, common-sense steps that the agency can and should take in order to avoid improper payments. However, if we're serious about preventing waste and fraud and ensuring that these critical benefits get to the people who need and deserve them, Congress must also do its part and provide needed resources and access to basic anti-fraud data to the Social Security Administration. 
The Social Security Administration said its accuracy rate for disability payments is more than 99%. But the mm -hmm. agency mm -hmm. noted that even small errors translate into big numbers. We are planning to do an investigation and we will recoup any improper payments from beneficiaries. It is too soon to tell what caused these overpayments, mm. but if we determine that fraud is involved, we will refer these cases to our office of the Inspector General for investigation. More than 8.2 million disabled workers received disability payments in 2010. Same shit's gonna happen. A figure that has grown to nearly 9 million. Last year, the agency paid out $137 billion in disability payments. Before people can receive disability benefits, there is a five month waiting period in which they can, in general, earn no more than about $1,000 a month. The waiting period is to ensure that beneficiaries have long-term disabilities. That's it? That's it. Okay, we're going to take a break now. It's time for the Reverend Dr. Bill's gastronomic delight known as lunch, and we'll be back with William H. Morrow III.